Hello and welcome to the China Repair Studio. Now today I thought we'd do some painting and I have here a Red Riding Hood and um, now she's a Staffordshire piece made Victorian times and this bit here was broken, it's sort of the top of the tree if you like, of the trunk and I fixed it and I've glued it, I've milliput, put milliput onto it and you can see now it just needs finishing painting in here and also this was broken along here and I can just see one or two pieces, I don't know if you can see here where there's a line which just needs a little bit of paint. So I thought we'd go through a bit of paint today um, and show you how the different types of paints you can use and we'll start painting her up. So first thing you'll need um, is some good with paints you really want to protect your surfaces so some kitchen roll and maybe an old towel um, you'd also need some different varieties and sizes of brushes now i use the flat one for use it for the glaze at the end and the rest is for painting on a white plate just so you can see when you're mixing colours and your powder pigments. Now, powder pigments, I've had these for at least 15 years. Little goes a long way. These ones are quite expensive. I bought them from Green and Stone in London, but they are the, probably the best quality, um, very top grade. And once you've got them, they last a lifetime. Alternative, is using acrylics which to be honest I rather like acrylics as well um, you don't have to mix them up and together to sort of to break them up and you just mix it with water and your ceramic glaze and they're, it's you have no nodules any little bits and pieces they're very it's just all smooth which they're very good and these are from Windsor and Newton which again a very good make and you can buy these ones from Amazon and it does work out cheaper you can get smaller tubes obviously I've got large tubes now one colour just very briefly I would highly recommend which I tend to use with everything or majority of things and that is this one um, and it's yellow ochre and it just sort of knocks back colours and just tones things down to an earthy tone so this is this is one colour as well as obviously white and black and then you've got your others but this is a very useful colour the other thing you'll need is a couple bottle some water with some water in and ceramic glaze now again you can buy this off amazon you mix it with the um with the paint and then after you would also then put it on afterwards to give it a nice shine and what I like about this is it is a water-based product so it's a little bit more eco-y than some of the others and doesn't have that smell and you also it just dries naturally you don't have to put it into an oven right so what we do first I think I will you have to build up colour, so I'm just going to do this bit here first, and then one I've got the first layer on, we'll just toss up a few of these bits, which I can just see a few of the lines. So, what I'll do first, I would probably use, because it's on a larger, not here, I use a larger brush. Now these are, I love sable brushes, these are a mixture, but if you, you get what you pay for on a brush. So, I guess our water. And what I will do is I'll just mix a tiny little bit of the glazing because that will just help keep it, lock it in. I have to press it quite hard. There we go. Oh, actually, before I do that, there's me saying I do that. I do use this, but what I do, which I have already done, because it's quite a large bottle, I put it into a small jar and I've written what it is because it does dry quite quickly and you don't want to keep opening the bottle up otherwise you're gonna it's just gonna thicken and dry quickly and this will last a long time so I put a bit into a jar and then I take use the jar sorry that was just for showing you got carried away then 
Right, here we go. So this is the Rustins. I'm just taking a bit of the Rustins here. I'll just pop that onto the plate. Obviously, close the jar, <laughs> otherwise it will dry out. Right, so let's mix some. This is why it's quite good to have a white plate, because you can see everything. I'll get some of this colour. That doesn't actually have a name on it, so I think the name, name came off ages ago. And it's really just mixing, matching and deciding. Now, I look at that, and that's actually quite red. Well, it's more of a raspberry red, and that's this is definitely more of a orange colour. So what I would do then is I would mix a little bit of white first, not too much. Again, it's just trial and error. I just dip a bit in some water in there first. Smidge in there. You can see it's just lighting up. No, that's not the right colour. So let's start again. So let's go for, let's see, a bit of this. This colour again, the ready. I'll just add some of that there. Always have some kitchen roll handy, it's always very useful. And then let's add a little, perhaps try some of this. It's all trial and error, to be honest, when you're painting. Just a little, little smidge, you don't need very much. You can always put a bit actually on the plate and just dip into it as and when. Right, let's see what's experiment, see what that looks like. So a little bit of that. With a little bit of that. Ah, oh, now that's coming together now. Can you see? It's more of the colour now. It's, it needed a bit, as I say, of a very useful colour, which, um, which again, is this one, which is the yellow ochre. You can mix powder pigments with acrylics, as I've just demonstrated here. That's fine. Now, I've got that colour together. I can add a bit more in there, because it's quite a large area. Maybe a bit more of the ochre. Maybe even more of the ochre. I'm sure I've got it in there. I'm just going a bit more of a liquid colour now. As I say, it's just, there we go, try and error. Now I've got the colour coming together. I would then add a, perhaps a little bit more of the glaze. I use a different brush so we're not putting any of the colour into there. say sizzle trial and error so there we go so mix a little bit of the glaze in with the water and the colour and then let's start applying you can see that this will just be the first per section now with Staffordshire pottery they were very crude when they made them and the people who would actually um, paint the pottery were home workers usually many of them were children so you know it's not like a piece of mycin or anything it's as I say it's quite crudely painted so it doesn't have to be too exact now the line is starting to go a bit there just dip in what you do is you build up the colour you don't just do it in one big lot you can see here there's lots of different tones so that will be, that's probably about, a little bit more there. It's looking better. It does start to dry quite quickly, particularly using the glaze. Let's see, so that's, let, now while we let that dry, I like to multitask, so that will just, it won't take very long to dry, but you do want it quite very dry, completely dry until you apply the next layer. So while we're waiting for that to dry, let's have a look at, let's get a, we need a smaller brush for this, it's quite small. Now, where is it? Now just here, if you can see in the light, you can see there, just where it's, the break has been, and the midi puts there. I just want to just take up some of that. So I will start with, it's got green, and it's got the brown. 
I'll start with the green first, just dip a bit in, and then I would then move on to the brown. So we get, this one is called Chrome Green Light. And again, just need a tiny, tiny bit. I'll use another area. Obviously it's not that colour, it's a lot lighter than that. So, let's get my kitchen here. Now I would use some white on there. Just get a bit, say, get a big blob and just put it onto there, and then just start mixing and just experimenting. Now that's getting to quite a good colour actually. Maybe a bit more white. I can almost just do the white on there. Yeah, that's a bit more there. Right, that's quite good. I'm quite liking that colour. So what I would then do is get again some of the rust ins it back on <laughs> oh, that's good. Put that on there. that's it all right there you go yeah that's a good that's a lovely mint green you can always have a little practice if you like when you have a piece and think is that the right color you can always just go onto an area and see is that the right color and then just take it off of your fingers now by looking at that again it's quite a lime green so i think what i would do let's try some of this um, color again which would knock it back a bit which is the one which i've always always used which is the yellow ochre which i already had on the plate just a tiny, sometimes you just need the tiniest amount. That's looking better. That's looking better now. And then I just add bits and pieces and just keep playing with it. There we go. Oh, that's got a bit too dark. Oh, let's get that bit there. Right. So you don't need very much. I mean, it's literally just a tiny bit there just so it blends in That's it. you just see bits on the line where it's it's looking quite good i mean you just need to play with the colors and tones obviously if it's something small like this it's a lot easier to blend in On the green, you don't really notice it very much. It's more of the brown. Right, so once I'm happy with that, I've just had a bit of brown. And then we can get back onto the tree. So here we've got some brown, which is a raw umber. Let's add a tiny bit of that. So it's quite a dark brown. Um, a little bit of water. Can you see that? And a little bit of the rustins. A bit more to you, I shouldn't have dipped that in. I should use my other brush. And if you just mix it, and you can see it's roughly it's kind of the same colour. Again, I can have a little practice on here next to it and see is it right yeah i'm quite pleased with that on the practice one wipe it off you want it to be the right consistency if it's too watery and um, we've got too much rust in in it's you're not going to show the pigment so much so you need a bit of the pigment of the paint now i can see a few areas where it just needs a little bit of blending just where the little white parts are it's where you need good eyesight you can go on the white bits and then also add in a little bit extra. It kind of blends in with everything else. See a bit there. Can't see any more anywhere, so I think that might be a bit there. There we go. Just yeah, can't see anything else there. That seems quite pleased with that. Yeah. Right, so. I'm quite happy with this bit. I just have to just tart him up a little bit and we're just going to finish off a little bit there now. 
So what I will do is take my original large brush. Now we've still got some paint on here. It is drying. Might be able to use a bit of that, but I think I'll start again. So we use some of this red. It's quite orange and they're quite deceiving. It's quite orange on there. When you put it on here, it's, it's definitely more of a pinky red. And then we used a little bit of this colour, which was the yellow ochre. Actually, it's already on there, but yeah, so we've already placed it on. So let's get some water. Kitchen roll. And then just keep dabbing until you get the right colour. Definitely more of a, an orange. I mean, we could also add, I can see some yellow in amongst here as well. So you might just be able to add just a little bit of yellow just to break it up because you don't want a big blob of orange. Ha, oh, grandfather clock. <laughs> Good timing. Right, so I've got some yellow here. This one is called primary yellow. It's a great colour actually. It's quite useful. So let's add a bit of yellow and see what happens. Some white in there. Just experiment. Well, that's quite a good colour. Now I don't want it to be have too much pigment in this last. It's almost going to be like a wash. But that's quite a nice orangey, orangey yellow. So I think what I'll do, that's a good colour. Again, get some of the rust ins. Different brush. Add a bit in, just add it onto the plate. Yeah, so just almost like a watery, you can say experiment, so it's almost like a wash of lighter, just to break up the orange. So here we are with our colour here. I'm just going to go in. That's better. I want to see a few lines because it's quite lined. I might just have a tiny little bit more darker on one spot. I'm not going to be too precious about it. That's better. You can just go by judgment and you know your eyes and you can sort of see. There you go. Yeah. Until that's done. I can see I've got a little bit there as well, right inside. So if I just get in there, just gently dab that. Obviously, the thicker you make it, the more it will cover the white. You see, it's starting to cover through now. Right, so I'll let that dry. Now while that's drying, I'm going to, the little bits I painted here, I'm just going to glaze. So what I will do, so it's my water. Just always make sure your brushes are completely clean. You don't want any paint to dry on them, otherwise they will. Um, it does ruin the brushes actually so always and never leave brushes in water either because again it will ruin the brush there we go all right that's nice and clean so what we need to do now is i've got my flat brush here and i'll just get a little bit of the glaze just a little bit there you don't need very much at all even less than that and it would just lock it in and give it a shine and yeah it just dries naturally it's brilliant so it's just on here where we had some you can see there just going to just glaze it let's give it a bit all over there's so many different tones and colors in here it just all blends in so that's all nicely done now so that can just dry now with this area it's starting to dry now in, you know, I'm just doing this as and when without any editing. So, in you know, I would really like to let that dry for a good 
10 minutes. Um, obviously, we have not going to have that time here. So well, I'll just demonstrate how I would try to use the, um, the rustins on in here. It's dried a bit actually now. It's quite a warm day. So what I would do is I would get my rustins here. Take a fair amount, not too much. Again, a little bit goes a long way. I think this is around, it's under £20, £18, something like that. And it does last such a long time, particularly if you put it into another another jar. So I'm just going to place it on a piece there. That's it. You don't want to have dribbles. Now, and then I was just lightly go over now I can see it's, it's still wet so that's a bit I'll have to get back to it back a bit that's it then we can just wait for that to dry and then once that's thoroughly dry I would then go over the rustings again with this flat brush, which I think is a lot better. Um, and then just one last time, I would go through this just to make it nice and shiny and so it's all blended in. So I hope this tutorial was useful on the painting front. Um, just a rough idea and I, of just introducing you to the ceramic glaze, the rustings, and also the powder pigments and the Winsor & Newton um, ones here, the tubes of the acrylics. Right, so hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe and like and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, bye.